All right, moving on now. And the royal family is known for its great love of tea. Joining us now is a man who is so close to the Queen, he's enjoyed a cup or two at Buckingham Palace, Stephen Twinings. Good morning Good to morning. you. I Good mean, morning. a name synonymous yeah. with tea. Yes. Uh, tell us the relationship. How, how far down the line are you? Uh, so I'm the 10th generation of the family uh, to be in tea, but our relationship goes back to 1837 when Queen Victoria appointed us as her supplier of tea, and we've had the honour and privilege of supplying every successive British King and Queen from that day to the present. Wow. Yeah. So you have to go into Buckingham Palace, do you? And yes, and see her, uh, the member of staff uh, that I would deal with, and uh, we discuss what their requirements are, and uh, of course we supply. You know when you have a cup of tea with the Queen? You know, it's, uh, a lot of people can get very nervous yeah, when, they're, when they're drinking tea. Yes. Did you do the old... <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't I, want to go there with the shakes. To start with, I don't actually sit down and have a cup oh, with Her Majesty. Oh, okay. you don't? No, I, I sit oh. down with her royal chef, of course, and uh, we have a cup of tea. But uh, should you put your pinky out? It goes back into a long way into history. It's not necessary to do today because, okay. the, yeah, it comes from some very politically incorrect reasons. <laughs> right. Does it? Oh, what yeah. Are um, when beautiful tea uh, bowls first arrived, for porcelain, this is uh, f from our friends at Royal Albert, but they, they were, it was a, a bowl without a handle. And the ladies 300 years ago would display their delicate little hands around the bowls at the top, so not to burn their hands, yes. But what they were actually trying to do is show off the bo delicate bone structure. Oh. That meant they were more delicate lady. And the shocking bit is the whiter the skin, the purer her soul. So, yes, oh. English society has moved forward since then. We, uh, Thank goodness. goodness yes. yes. So uh, they had their portraits painted drinking tea, and there they are with their little pinky sticking out. So we thought when we saw these portraits displayed in public that that's how we should that's do it. Should do. So yeah. not necessary to do today. Because okay. I have done that in the past when meeting boyfriends, parents, yeah. and things for really? the first time yes. when I was a younger woman. Yes. Those relationships you know, didn't last no, long, they did they? they didn't. Now I think it was the finger out and mm. they, you know, they knew yeah. what that was about. Who's the biggest tea drinker in the, in the royal family? I would imagine they would all be large tea drinkers. Um, yes, with the honour of being what's called a royal warrant holder, comes all the, 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 at the top of the bill of the sort of deal you do with them is confidentiality. Oh. Um. So I'm afraid that is top secret information. <laughs> if we were to surmise that a, uh, a friend of mine called Harry yeah, oh yes. um, liked his tea, mm. what type of tea do you reckon he'd like? Probably a G in tea. <laughs> Especially at this time in the morning, too. Uh, well, I wouldn't speculate on that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the proper etiquette when you're in the company of royalty in terms of, you know, do you wait? Like, who, who plays mum? Uh, I mum. think. Uh, it, well, you know, they say. Mum they would say, play mum. Who's wouldn't you? mum? Yes, but yes. who's doing mum? I, I think if, if you're in a setting like that, you, the, the staff would be playing mum and pouring the tea. Uh, obviously, the, the, it's the, the level of conversation you would never... Uh, well, actually, over afternoon tea generally, you never talk about politics or religion or things that are going to get you hot and bothered, because it's mm. a nice relaxed affair. Um, but yes, you need to serve it in beautiful cups and, uh, uh, and out of a beautiful teapot, and you need to serve great quality tea. So we, we've just launched a, a lovely range of pyramid bags down here, which are boutique quality teas that you can find in the supermarket aisles. Uh, so what you serve is terribly important. Brisk English morning. Mm. I am a English breakfast, breakfast tea drinker and this one apparently is the one for the weekend. It is. It's richer, deeper because we're using a larger leaf. You can get more subtle flavours out of it and great quality teas. Very carefully selected. Mm. Sugar or no sugar? Oh gosh, sugar is sin. Because there's, <laughs> oh. there's, there's so much... Haven't you heard? So much effort goes into growing tea. We're yeah. not growers of tea, but we respect that skill. And our tea tasters train for five years just to become a tea taster. So our master tea tasters have 20 years of experience, and they go to so much trouble to get your tea to you in perfect conditions. Put sugar in it and just obliterate it. Well, that, that, that gives up my idea. I was going to suggest that you did a bag, a tea bag, with sugar already in it. It would work for You're not do some that, percentage of the population, but no. We're, 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 about, we're, we're about great tea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Money maker. And just very quickly, I am absolutely stringent on this. I couldn't overestimate how important I think it is. Tea bag out before milk in. Oh, yeah. If you're brewing in a cup of mug, absolutely. You're spot on. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you so Pleasure, much, Stephen. Nice very to meet interesting. You, yeah, it's very, everybody has their own way that they mm. like their tea made. And people can be quite strict on it. Some people, I know. <laughs> Let us know how you like your tea being made.